you've no doubt heard the erythritol story that's causing a lot of people in the low carb to zero carb space kind of blanch a little bit at the potential news that erythritol is bad for you. Look, I don't consume erythritol, not because of anything against erythritol, because it's erythritol. I don't consume erythritol because I do the carnivore diet. I reject processed foods because they're processed foods. And erythritol is a highly processed food. You can't really just make sugar alcohol at home. I mean, I'm sure somebody with a moderate lab setup could probably do it. But I reject processed foods in general. Beef, butter, bacon, eggs, a little bit of seafood. That's my diet. I mean, it's it works. It works for me. If you do keto, I always advocate for people doing keto to do a clean, whole foods keto away from all the keto junk. But I will also say that there is a place in life for the occasional sweet thing if you can handle it. Not everybody can. Some people, erythritol triggers all their sugar cravings, all their sweet cravings, and drives them off the deep end. You know this. This is not a controversial statement. But this erythritol study is uh, more than a little controversial because it's actually kind of stupid what people are doing with it. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. We have this story where people are basically saying, hey, look, erythritol bad. That's what we're hearing. So the study, you've probably seen videos on this already, so I'm just going to give you the quick version of this. If you haven't, name one of your medical carnivore influencers. They've probably broken this thing down and dunked on this stupid study. But the, this study was an eight-person subject study. Each one of them were already at risk of cardiovascular disease, and each were given 30 grams of erythritol in one fell swoop. That's a lot of erythritol. By comparison, your typical candy, single serve of candy with erythritol in it, is going to have like a gram, half a gram. It's not going to be much, okay? A couple grams, depending how sweet it is. That's a lot of erythritol at one time. But the author said, but even the author is, of the article itself said it wasn't much of a study, which beg begs the question of why they submitted it and how it got published. I would never write an article for publication, and I have been published in some places not related to nutrition. But I would never, you know, undermine my entire work by saying, eh, yeah, but this isn't, you know, that big of a study. I put all this work in, but it's not really that good. I, I would never do that. So why would the author do that in their own study? Some people are sensitive to artificial sweeteners and will have adverse reactions to them. On my docket of things to do is a video on some of the adverse reactions you can have to stevia. That's one of the more well-known ones that you can have adverse reactions to. So erythritol, there may be some truth to erythritol being bad for some people. It's worth pointing out here that in this eight-person subject study, they correlated that when subject ate erythritol that increased blood levels of erythritol. I'm shocked by this revelation. I'm sure you are too. It was then said that they may increase clotting based on their blood values, some, which is literally a stretch. If you want your erythritol brownie as part of your diet, I guess you can have it. But I'm just telling you, please honestly consider a whole foods keto diet. But if you're not really willing to go there, if that's not for you, there's a whole other erythritol study from like a decade ago that has a bit of a different bent to it. And in this peer-reviewed study, which you can find linked on PubMed with the title of Effects of Erythritol on Endothelial Function in Patients with Type 2 Diabetes Mellitus, a pilot study. I'm going to give you all the details of this, but that study suge suggests, and I say suggests because studies don't really, food nutrition studies don't prove anything. They take, they take a hypothesis and test it under certain parameters, gather data, and the data is anal analyzed and presented to people to then duplicate the study and analyze the study and find the flaws in it and point out the flaws and then try to fix the flaws or just point out how much bunk the study is. Individual studies don't prove much of anything. But in this study, it suggests that erythritol consumption acutely improves small vessel endothelial function and chronic treatment reduced central aortic stiffness. Erythritol may be a preferred sugar substitute for patients with diabetes mellitus. And more studies need to be done. Okay, so if you if those situations, if any, if you have any of those conditions, erythritol might be for you. 
or it might not be because you may have other conditions that cause problems. The easiest solution is if you're going to use an artificial sweetener, don't use an artificial one. Use one that comes is derived with the littlest processing as possible from a natural source. On the rare occasion when I put something like a few drops in my coffee or tea, it will be a sweetener. It's going to be monk fruit drops, which are not the cheapest thing. You can get them from Lakanto makes drops, and they're magnificent. They're wonderful. They don't leave a residue or anything. A couple drops go a long way, and I've never heard of anybody having problems with monk fruit. Never had my insulin spike from it. I have never had you know, weird triggered cravings from it. All it ever does is take the edge off of the bitter edge off my coffee on those rare times where I decide I need that. But if you need your monk fruit, you can probably have your monk fruit. If you if you want your erythritol, you can probably have your erythritol if it fits your diet plan. But if you are on the carnivore diet, are those kind of sweeteners should be at best rare. Like I'm in the process right now of trying not actually not to consume for the next month any sweeteners of any kind, as I'm still recovering from artificial sweetener overload and dairy overload at Christmas. I'm still trying to recover because my weight, I gained a bunch of weight at Christmas from this and then it stalled. I haven't been able to lose it. So I'm just trying to get back to pretty much clean carnivore, as clean of carnivore as I can get. But if, if erythritol fits your dietary needs, if it fits your plan, you can probably have it just fine. Remember, a single study doesn't prove anything. The study I just cited from you from PubMed is as valid as that other study, perhaps more so. Probably done with better study parameters and taking eight sick people and subjecting them to obscene amounts of erythritol and then being shocked when they had a bad reaction. Give me a break. Yeah, that other erythritol study might be more trustworthy than this one that caused all these waves. But then again, have you noticed erythritol is not in that many keto foods anymore? The one sweetener, by the way, one art the one sugar the one sugar alcohol you should absolutely avoid under every circumstance is maltitol. No one talks about maltitol. Let me know if you want a video on maltitol. The preview of that is the prefix of the word mal, the Spanish for bad. That's how you know. It's the sugar that's it's the sugar substitute that's in those infamous Haribo sugar-free gummy bears. The ones that well, the ones that are like the cheapest, tastiest laxative you could ever buy okay stay away from those but otherwise if you want your erythritol you can probably have it in small doses if it fits your diet plan and if you can't have it if you get weird reactions avoid it let me know in the comments if you know you can't have erythritol either because you're on the carnivore diet and you are like me just think that sweeteners really don't have a place on the carnivore diet or you can't have erythritol because it gives you some sort of adverse reaction including triggering cravings or spiking your blood sugar. Let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help, as does sharing this on social media. That helps a lot, too. I'm Anthony Stein, the Practical Carnivore. Thanks for tuning in today.